I'm not sure AI is going to be able to go, oh, well, let me just plug this into my little portal here and figure out what I need to do. I worry about that. And Mm -hmm. then I worry about people who think that the AI is going to get them through stuff when they don't have any experience themselves of, as I call it, feeling your way through the obstacles and feeling your way through a trail. That's all part of the fun. Howdy, I am Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, the premier show for Jeep enthusiasts and hardcore off-roaders. Whether you're new to the Jeep world or a seasoned Jeeper, we've got you covered with latest news, tips, and advice to help you get the most out of your Jeep. On tonight's episode, we are going to be talking about Jeep to add autonomous off-roading to their Jeeps. Uh, what? Oh, dear. (laughs) (laughs) In Newbie Nuggets, Wendy shares some winching safety tips tips <laughs> that's not a oktoberfest event I'm, that exactly. we're talking about and uh in the uh, in, in our gladiator update video surveillance system that's a question you know is there a video surveillance system kind of like the tesla thing is what i'm thinking about it, and in our must have stuff for your jeep a disposable gmrs radio oh, that ought to be good <laughs> Are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Well, howdy, it's Wendy, and after last week's episode 819 on winching, I'm going to share some safety tips. Very, very cool. So I've got to say this for the first legitimate time. Jeep Talk Show is on the air. (gasps) Like... The real air? What? What? You know, we've, we've used this phrase many times in the past 13 years of the show, which is technically wrong. Uh, the show has never been broadcast over the commercial radio waves. Well, that all changed yesterday, Monday, June the 5th. Oh, my goodness. Well, How exciting. It, it is. It really is. It's like, uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, like 20, 25, 30 years too late. <laughs> <laughs> as far as it to be something significant, there's even a discussion. I, th- I think we may have talked about it here uh, about uh, various uh, manufacturers, automobile manufacturers, no longer having AM radio receivers in their vehicles. Had, had you heard about that already, uh, Wendy? Yeah, but I also read that they they back themselves up on that statement that they're still going to have them. Yeah, I I don't understand it personally, but but whatever. So uh, the uh, the Jeep Talk Show is on WWPR fourteen ninety AM, Tampa Bay, Florida. Woohoo! Yep, and uh, you say what the hell? How did the hell did that happen? Well, uh, it's it's all a miracle, and you can listen to it. Actually, you can go to fourteen ninety WWPR dot com and listen to it streamed live. So, if you're not in the Tampa Bay, Florida area, you can just go over there to that website and uh, listen. It is uh, every Monday in June, six a.m. New York time. That then that's a radio thing they taught me because I would normally say Eastern time because you know that's, yeah. that's what the time zone is in Florida. Well, it, it's the same in New York, by the way. Exactly, but <laughs> but apparently people are very time zone uh, unknowledgeable. They they don't understand the whole time zone thing. But if you say New York time, then apparently everybody around the world understands what time zone that is. I mean, you just don't use the word time zone. So. It's- Interesting. I guess we could call it Texas time or yeah. California time too, right? Exactly. Uh, Houston or uh, Illinois, if you're up there in Steve's uh, Steve O's area, <laughs> he, he hates that. <laughs> yeah, Illinois. <Love laughs> <it>. So <laughs> you know, so if you're if you're in the Tampa Bay, Florida area, and your vehicle still gets AM, <laughs> have a listen. <laughs> WWPR 1490 AM Jeep Talk Show is coming to WWPR 1490 AM Monday 6 AM New York time It's about Jeeps Your hosts Tony, Wendy and Chuck Bring you the latest information about the vehicles you love No, Chuck was in the military (laughs) This is tame for the the military people I guarantee you You do not want to miss the Jeep Talk Show Join us Monday 6 AM New York time Are we talking about poo? (laughs) We are Yes we are I, I just can't wait now, that was the first time you've heard that, isn't it, uh, Wendy? Yeah, it just dawned on me. <laughs> it was awesome. I like it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So that was the promo that uh, they uh, they played last week, uh, leading up to the uh, the Monday uh, release date, uh, first release date, and uh, we'll see how this thing goes. It, it, it may it may take off. Uh, of course, 
uh, we are primarily doing this just so that we can uh, get the Jeep Talk Show in more people's e- more people ear holes and yeah. uh, you know get get more listeners because uh, more listeners is more fun. Well, and speaking of promoting the Jeep Talk Show, we're we're going to have another episode, Tony. Not just four days a week, but five. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It's called the Chit Chat. So uh, it's going to be girls to start off with, Julianne and I, Julianne from Wranglers. Um, but we actually have a date to tell everybody about. So we're going to have the first airing of it on Monday morning, June 12th, which is, that's right around the corner here. It is. I mean, it's it's very a couple soon. of days. Yeah, a couple of days. But what's really cool about it is that we're actually going to do um, some interviews with uh, industry leaders, uh, a lot of women to start off with and kind of talking to them about how they get started and what's their favorite trails and you name it, we're going to talk about it. So you guys don't want to miss that. And we're going to probably do t- two a month, I think, to start off. But I think it's exciting. Oh, it's very exciting. And uh, the whole idea behind this is is that it's not going to have uh, any men in charge of it. It's going to be hosted by women, uh, Julianne and uh, Wendy. So this is going to be women voices talking to women. And, and it's not just women. But no. uh, it, it's it's kind of like a, a a nice place where women can go and talk about uh, going off roading and jeeps and all the things because you don't got to be a man to do this stuff. But you know what I think is going to be great too is we probably are going to inspire a lot more women to get out there and wheel, um, just get out and try it, do things, and I think that's what's going to happen is by listening to some of these women who've been out there doing it, uh, be inspired to maybe get out and try. So I'm excited about that for sure. Yes. Can't wait. All right, uh, Wendy. Is it, it? Have I been asleep very for too long or something? Is it April Fools uh, in June? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right with this one. I'm not really sure what's going to happen here, but this ought to be good. <laughs> oh, it ought to be interesting. You know, I first heard about something like this uh, for maybe five years ago uh, from uh, Land Rover, where they were actually looking into developing an automated system so that the Land Rover could go over, um, I guess, extreme obstacles uh, where the passenger and driver would get out of the Land Rover. It would navigate uh, the uh, the dangerous off-road, potentially uh, hazardous uh, flip-over situation. And then once it got done having fun all by itself, you could get back in the Land Rover and continue on. And I've actually made fun of Land Rover several times uh, since then. Um, I can only see a few things that could go wrong with that. Number one, if you're going off road, don't you want to be in the vehicle most of the time? Because that's the fun part of it. Apparently not. <laughs> and, and and number two, I have a little bit of an opinion on the AI technology. So, you know, part of being off road is to assess and look at the roads and make a determination of what line you're going to pick. I don't know any amount of AI that could actually really assess and do what our brain does. And the reason I say that is that your road could be perfectly smooth and fine today, but here comes rain, mother nature, weather, snow, sleet, give whatever. And now that road has changed, which is part of the fun of off-roading is that you, you go on a trail, you don't know what to expect. Maybe the weather has changed it or there's mud or sand or dirt. I'm not sure AI is going to be able to go, oh, well, let me just plug this into my little portal here and figure out what I need to do. I worry about that. And Mm -hmm. then I worry about people who think that the AI is going to get them through stuff when they don't have any experience themselves of, as I call it, feeling your way through the obstacles and feeling your way through a trail. That's all part of the fun. So who's this going after? I mean, I don't understand. I don't think most of us off-roaders, yourself included, want to have the vehicle do it for us, do we? No, I don't think so. So, Of course, what we're talking about is uh, Jeep looks to add autonomous fun for off-road enthusiasts. Autonomous fun for off-road enthusiasts. I don't think you necessarily have to get out of the Jeep, <laughs> but you know, when the when the 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 when the, what is it when the hard when the difficulty gets uh, gets higher, the 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 people just sit back and let the AI, AI do it. Uh, so, yeah. but to get this, Jeep actually demonstrated AI and autonomous off-road technology it is developing for its electric vehicles. So the, the good news is, is that if you've got an actual uh, gas guzzling engine, you don't have to worry about AI driving for you. Thank goodness. Yeah, I, I'm going to stick with that. But seriously, it, 
autonomous fun. Do you just sit at home, send your vehicle, and then take pictures while it's there and oh, then post it? Virtual reality. <laughs> I see what you're yeah. saying there. You just Yeah, I mean, does do you really have to even be there? Were you really there? You I wrap mean, yourself in, you wrap yourself in <laughs> bubble wrap while you're in the VR experience. God, yes. See, <laughs> I'm staying home. I'm a little sprayed. Let my car go do it first. In, in case you doze off, you know, while you're going yes. off road, you know, the bubble oh wrap will gosh. keep you from hurting yourself when you, you when you fall over. I mean, I understand they're trying to develop AI for cities and, you know, this kind of stuff. Tesla's are obviously trying to do something like that, but I don't understand the application off road. I just don't. And I'm sorry. I think they did this testing through the rocky red terrain of Moab. Yes. Hello, it's pretty smooth. You were just there. Why, why I mean, not? Oh, I guess they can't do it on the Rubicon because it's closed. <laughs> well, how about let's <laughs> let's bring AI to Big Bear. Let me see if they can handle that. And that's what I'm talking about. Trails change all the time. Uh-huh. I guess Moab probably doesn't because it's solid rock and granite or whatever it is. But I just I don't understand it. I don't I don't want to be in a world where the vehicle does all its thinking for me and and decides. I still love the fact that I get out and I. I drive, I look at a, a, an obstacle, I make a decision, it's either a good one or a bad one, I, I feel the wheels going over, I know what my tires are doing, I know what my vehicle's doing. That's the fun of this. You know, I just realized that there's a, we all, we've said things about participation trophies over the years because you're not actually doing anything, but you get a, a, a trophy <laughs> for doing it. I wonder if this is going to apply to the honor badges, the Jeep honor badges. If, if you actually do something where the AI did it and you get a, a, a honor uh, passenger award or something. Why don't you just sit at home or and dro- just sit- Occupy the driver's seat uh, uh, award. Just borrow, <laughs> just borrow someone else's pictures of what they did and then you can call it your own. There you go. So, I, so Wendy, you're a horse person. I, I know yes. you weren't around this many, many years ago when horses were the main mode of travel. No, but, I was. But there was a lot of people that were upset about the automobile when yes. that came out because yep. it wasn't the horse, and the horse could find its way back home. It, uh, it actually, if it knew the way, you could actually sleep. There was, it was, Good. I guess, the first automated uh, driving. Yes, it was. <laughs> 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 and people were saying naysayers, pardon the pun, were saying that you know the horses no these these in, uh, infernal internal combustion uh, systems will never uh, never replace a horse, and then they they did. So I, I wonder if all of this negative AI talk that we do and the negative EV talk that we do were just like those people with livery stables and uh, horses and and they don't want the change to occur. Well, we might be, but we're also entitled to our opinion. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's just interesting. My question would be, is this being shoved down our throats or is this truly the way of the future? And I don't think anybody knows that. I think it's just an evolution. But I would welcome Jeep to send me some of these and let me test the AI for them in our Big Bear Mountains. You know, I've mentioned this before. I'll mention it again. I, I look forward to the AI, the automated uh, vehicles, especially if there's nobody in the vehicle that's just driving itself, because uh, you'll be able to pick on them. You'll be able to swerve at them and make them do things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I already heard there's a couple of test cities. I believe Phoenix is one of them where they have um, Uber that are driverless. So the vehicle comes and you, you, you know, you put in your app and you want this Uber to pick you up. And there's no driver. It knows where you need to go. You can have a conversation with the car. You can ask it to stop along the way or whatever you need to do. But pretty much once you're at the destination, you get out and it drives on. There's nobody in the car driving it. I want to see uh, the the automated cab driver uh, like was in the Johnny Cab in Total Recall. Yes, my favorite movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, with his head spinning around. And that weird facial movement. Oh I, I my mean, gosh. I have seen some uh, automated uh, uh, robots here recently that really reminded me of that. And yeah. I thought, that, oh yeah, they just need to put them on a this pedestal in, yes. the, in front of the car. And, you know, Stick them in there. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. But it's so weird because it's these things have happened in our lifetime and have really come about very quickly. Um, and, and I wonder if the AI is more about the, it's just there's been a recent breakthrough. It probably was a year or two years ago, but uh, seems recent. Uh, I think that maybe there's a lot of people playing with it because they see the potential of making a lot of money. Like, for example, I know Tesla has been big into the uh, automated driving because uh, they could actually, I mean, n- I'm sorry, not even they, uh, between Tesla and you, the owner, 
you could uh, l- l- not not it's not Uber, but it's a, like a Tesla Uber where your car can actually make you money, and it may make enough money where you don't have to pay anything for it. We may actually see Tesla vehicles uh, kind of like the HP printers were, where and it wasn't just HP, but the the printer was next to nothing, but mm-hmm. the ink was expensive. But instead right. of you paying for the ink, it's going to be people. Uh, uh, renting your vehicle to take them places and not driving it, but being driven. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. And uh, I forget who it was. I don't know if it was, um, uh, it was a, a high-end uh, vehicle company. Uh, the president today said they're not interested in, in uh, automatic uh, uh, driving. And I was, I think my comment was, yeah, let the let Tesla and the other companies uh, take the billions or trillions of dollars that they're going to make from this automated stuff. Uh, I understand that's not the way the, uh, not Mercedes, uh, what's a high-end uh, uh, Ferrari BM- or something BMW? like that? BMW? No, no, it's like a super Ferrari. high-end Ferrari or, you know, the $200,000, $400,000 vehicles. Uh, I think that... McLaren? That, no, it wasn't that one. It's one I rem- uh, that I recognize. I just can't remember right now. Uh, but uh, I think that p- people that fail to embrace AI, businesses that fail to embrace AI, are going to be woefully behind. I mean, many of them are woefully behind Tesla already. I don't know. I mean, I, I think you, as a company, have to make a decision on what you think is going to work. I, I think there's probably going to be a segment for AI. I think it's going to be more city driven. I just, I'm, I'm still want to see it go off road. I just don't know mm. how that's even going to work. I understand a fire road. I understand a road that probably doesn't change much. That the map is correct, GPS is correct, but half the time we're on stuff that GPS doesn't even exist. There's not even a mapping system for it. You know, it's just out there. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I gonna mean, I'm gonna disagree with you. Uh, I know that uh, Elon has said that. Uh, uh, autonomous driving is going to be 10 times safer than a human doing it. I will predict to you that a vehicle, an AI vehicle, will be able to go off-road, uh, it, it, and I'm sure, 10 times uh, safer and, and more accurately than a human will be able to do it. I'm not saying that it should. I'm not saying that you should let it. I, I very much believe that you should have the experience yourself. There's no reason to let the let the uh, the vehicle do it. But I mean, for example, what if you what if you were injured uh, off road, uh, and the vehicle is still drivable, but you can't drive it? It could literally get you off the road and to uh, to safety uh, to a hospital or something like that uh, if it had the ability to drive itself on road or on the highway or preferably both. So uh, I, I th- I'm going to try to embrace the, the stuff coming down the pike uh, and not be the, the livery stable guy looking for a new job. Well, I'll be opposite of you, and that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's great <laughs> for the show, too. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. And if you're wheeling alone, then maybe the vehicle can help you. But that's why they have, you know, call systems, and maybe the car can dial the phone for you and get you help. But you shouldn't be wheeling alone. So I still don't see the purpose of that. But mm-hmm. hey. Well, we'll things, see what happens. Things happen. I mean, sometimes people leave your ass behind because they just don't like you on uh, well, up on the Metal Masher. <laughs> apparently that happened to you. <laughs> it would have been nice if your Jeep could have driven you home and you would have been like, I have no nothing to worry about. Or, or just you. the soothing voice. It's okay. You're like, it's okay, Dave. <laughs> I'll open the pod bay doors for you. <laughs> exactly. Just, just good, Yeah. Good morning, Dave. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, speaking of subscribing and learning about things on the show and getting all of our content sooner, how about becoming a Patreon subscriber? I'm um, sold. <laughs> you're sold. See, that's Thank all you. I had to say. <laughs> Look, it's really, really easy. Things you do, you get ad-free content, some early access. Um, we send you some stickers. And the best part I love is the discount codes for all the product that we talk about and some things we don't talk about. But why not shop and get a discount? All right, so really easy to do, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You can click on that Patreon at the top of the page. And guess what? It's only $5 a month to support, oh, I like this, the best damn Jeep Talk Show in the world. I'm about to bleep you again. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) So I'm not picking on the renegades with this story, Wendy, but uh, if, (laughs) if it happens to work out that way, I'm okay with it. So Jeep dealers have enough renegades, and I'm not talking about the one from like the 70s. I'm talking about the, the modern day one. The new ones? Okay. Yeah, they have enough on hand to last two years. 
Whoa, they need to do some heavy marketing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'll say this. The Renegade is not a bad-looking vehicle. I, I just don't consider it to be a, a, j- a real Jeep. And I understand that they need to do uh, get some high-mile-per-gallon uh, vehicles so they can offset the low-mile-per-gallon mile vehicle, vehicles that we all want. Uh, so uh, I, I was just surprised that uh, the Jeep, Jeep Renegade has a market day supply of 753 vehicles. Wow. And at, at current sales volume, volumes, because that's really what it, it means, is when, I mean, yeah. you can't say two years because uh, it's just basic, uh, basic math. This is how many we're selling. So right. with 753, it's going to take two years to sell them. And we're not talking about one dealership. We're talking about uh, around the country. Right. So, all, you know, like all the dealerships, the inventory. And the sad thing is they're still making them. Well, if, you, if you're if you looking for the Renegade, fits your lifestyle, whatever you're doing, try to pick out that Trailhawk version because that is a very capable off-road vehicle. Sure, it's not going to be doing black diamonds and difficult stuff, but uh, I'm very impressed with this little vehicle. Um, the, the Trailhawk, it's a little bit more lifted. I think the tires are a little bit beefier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a really good little car. So I guess if you need that little maybe a smaller vehicle because you're more in the city parking's a pain in the booty you know whatever um it might have some benefits for you i certainly like it better than like the jeep compass or some of the other brands Mm -hmm. so you know the other models but anyway i i think it's a very capable vehicle so right well and the other thing that i I always like to point out is it's really not part of the multi-billion dollar aftermarket uh, parts and stuff that you can slap on the the Jeep, like the Wrangler or, or the Gladiator, and even yeah. the even the older Jeeps, uh, XJ, CJ, CJs are getting a little harder to, uh, to find. Parts for them are getting a little harder to find, but they're out there. Uh, TJ certainly a very popular off road Wrangler, uh, even the YJ. So uh, there's just a lot of aftermarket stuff there, and it's not just uh, like Mopar. It's there's a lot of uh, uh, vendors uh, that mm-hmm. have built their business off of this aftermarket stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's still, you know, there are things you can do to upgrade it, but that Trailhawk version, if you have to make a choice, I would go for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there was an interesting list that came uh, along with this story. Uh, it shows the 753 in inventory for the uh, for the uh, the Gladiator. I'm not sorry, not the Gladiator, the Renegade. Uh, but there's also a, a 700, and uh, you know they got this wrong. I'm going to take a pause here. They got this wrong. It's not Cherokee. I just copy and pasted that. That's the Renegade. That's the Renegade number. So we start the list with the 753 for the Jeep Renegade, uh, the Chevrolet Silverado 4500 cash, uh, chassis cab, easy for me to say, uh, mm-hmm. 443 in inventory, Lincoln wow. Corsair 423, the uh, Dodge Ram 2500 403, uh, the, the, the modern day Jeep Cherokee 391, uh, and uh, they've got the Pacifica Hybrid 355. The, here's the Jeep Compass you were talking about, Wendy, at 352. The Ram 1500 Classic uh, 328. And I'm kind of surprised by this. The Jeep Gladiator 283. And, yeah. and, and if you guys are interested in getting a Jeep Gladiator, you might be able to use this to your advantage to get <laughs> exactly. a good price. I was just going to say, this is good numbers for negotiating. And uh, somebody asked me the other day uh, what I think about the the, uh, the Gladiator. I, I absolutely love it. It has been yeah. amazing. And after taking it to Eastern Jeep Safari, I'm even more impressed with it. Yeah, it's a great vehicle. I've had it several times with new drivers. I've also had it with experienced drivers. And it's an awesome vehicle. And mm-hmm. boy, does it handle really well. I like it. Yep. And it's it's sad that there's uh, so many uh, Jeep uh, vehicles here on this uh, this list. But, you know, things change. Things come and go. They ebb and flow. And uh, we'll have to see what happens uh, in the future. I am a little surprised about the Ram uh, the Ram trucks because those have traditionally been very good sellers. Yeah. It could just be that chip issue, too. Remember, they didn't have chips for a while. So some of this stuff could be now available all of a sudden, uh, you, right? You know, I wonder if it didn't have the right chip, if it would be listed as, as uh, something they could sell. If it would actually be one of the, the you know, the, the 403 or the 753, uh, it, like yeah. if it wasn't ready to go. Mm-hmm. It's hard to sell Oops. something that's not ready to go. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Wasn't <laughs> wasn't in the information that we got. Darn it. <laughs> well, I want to talk a little bit about safety while winching. As you guys know, we did talk about uh, on episode 819, which is last week, the pros and cons to having a winch on your Jeep. Um, and I did mention that I was going to bring in some safety tips. So I just have a great list. You can check out the episode for more of the details. But 
If you're new to jeeping and you have a winch or you're getting a winch, please read the owner's manual and understand what your winch is capable of, your load capacity and how it operates. Sort of just like a little bit of a service there. And know that using a winch can be very dangerous and should not be taken lightly. So I just want to give some safety things to think about. It is inherently dangerous. You can get hurt. You can also hurt others by not paying attention. So you definitely need to be aware, even if you're not actually doing the winching, but you're watching, um, listen to whoever's given those directions. Oh, and, so, and where you're standing is an important oh, thing as well. Yeah, I have that down here too. But, you know, sometimes as a, as a spectator, you're like, ooh, because it's so cool to watch. Anytime there's a recovery or something different than just driving through mm -hmm. an obstacle. And of course, you know, I've been a proponent of getting out and watching and learning everything that you can. You really need to pay attention. If someone is in charge, is not giving directions, you just need to know some of these things so that you can keep yourself safe. So um, if you are helping or you've been asked to help, having a pair of tight fitting gloves is very important, not somebody else's gloves that are too big for you. Um, winch lines come in synthetic and steel, um, and the steel can uh, start to splinter, as we call it, and, and you can get those steel splinters, and that is oh, a pain man, in man. the booty in your finger. Have you ever had one of those? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> They're uh, just I, I've learned that if I'm not wearing gloves, I don't let my hand slide on the cable. I hold it in one spot and then stop the cable and then yeah. move it, move my hand and grab it. And of course, you have to be careful doing that because you can pull your fingers into the uh, the fairly. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, too, with that winch spool. It can and will break off fingers or pinch fingers. So do not ever put your hands around that spool while operating. So that means staying back. Usually we're a good, I don't know, maybe two or three feet away from that. Maybe that's too far, maybe a foot and a half. But you do not get that close to it. It's just, it's super dangerous. Um, winch controllers, you know, first off, that should always be underneath your seat. It should not be in the back of the Jeep with your recovery bag of things because half the time, if you're the one who needs to be pulled out and you can't get out for some reason, you know, you can't open the door, maybe you're turtled. There's just no way for you to get out. Having that winch controller, you can hand to somebody else who could actually connect if they needed to do that. So, uh, but there, some of them are wireless, which are the newer winches now. Um, a lot of them are just connected with the cable. Um, so you also need anchor points. Uh, those are important. We've talked about, uh, the metal shackles or the D, the D rings, uh, soft shackles, mm -hmm. but you need an anchor point to actually connect. So I guess the issue is if you're not the one that's in trouble and you're helping, then you need to figure out what that anchor point is going to be. If you're the one who's getting pulled or, um, unstuck, if you will, then the person who's helping you or is volunteered to use their winch is usually looking for an anchor point, which is usually on your Jeep somewhere. But that is important. Your Jeep also needs to be running when you're going to use your winch motor because it takes a lot of battery power. So don't pull, you know, uh, hey, I'll just pull line and not have your Jeep running and wonder why it doesn't start afterwards. You're going to just need to do that. Um, putting something on to dampen the line, um, you need to have a cloth or a towel, a jacket, even um, floor mats will work. And that goes over the midway of the line once it's pulled out to mitigate what we call the whip should the line break. Um, so just know that that's something else you need to stay away from in the swing zone. Tony talked about that in a moment ago. Figure like a 180 degrees from where that winch is. If you're the one controlling the winch and in charge, you make sure that everybody is out of that zone. Do not let bystanders get closer because it's cool to watch. And I have been on runs or things that I've watched other people in other groups and they're all standing there. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I have to walk away because if that comes, breaks and swips around, you know, especially cable, that can be very dangerous. Um, even synthetic will hurt you too, but it's just super important to make sure that you're staying out of the way. Um, generally, we kind of, whenever we're pulling line, there is one person in control. It's usually the person who is controlling the winch line. That way they can look at the vehicle they're moving or they can be in control. They're visually there watching. So designate somebody who is in charge. That is super important. And again, if you're there watching and somebody's not barking those kind of controls and commands, get the heck away from it because something may go wrong and you don't need to be in the middle of that kind of stuff. So, um, Gosh, not too much else. There is some other stuff on here you guys can take a look at, um, episode 823, and look at all those things. But, Tony, have you? did you have to pull line in uh, 
you didn't have to pull line in Moab, but you no. guys have pulled line in Hidden Falls, didn't you? Didn't somebody pull line? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't do it, but I have uh, I have winched people before. Uh, and uh, the the thing I would the one thing I wanted to ask you what's your opinion. I know what my opinion on this is. Um, just because people you're talking about winch safety, that's mm-hmm. not the only way people um, pull people out of situations. No. Sometimes they use chains. <laughs> And no. I would, in my no. opinion, yeah, no. it, it sounds like yours is the same. My opinion is if somebody pulls out a chain and starts hooking it up to another vehicle, you're done. You're best to get to another county. And that's only yes. if the county is 50 miles away. Yeah, exactly. No, seriously. <laughs> uh, and it's true. You know, we talked a little bit about on the last episode that winching is sort of the last resort and even Chuck pitching on that. Really, you've already determined that, you know, your, your toe strap or kinetic rope uh, isn't going to work. And that's when you have to do winch. And the only time that we did it, remember when Bill ran out of gas? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> he was oh, yeah. going downhill. Remember that? He stopped the vehicle downhill and all that. The gas was, he had plenty of gas, but it just was below the, the siphon tube to be able to get out. So he actually had to winch himself downhill, which is very odd, by the way. It is. Um, and he was, you know, by himself, but it was just a simple little run with his family just to show them something. And that happened. So we we really don't use the winch for ourselves. Um, and usually it's for somebody else that you're helping to get up and off of something. Maybe they took the wrong line. But honestly, if most people that get stuck on something is a, a toe strap works perfectly fine. You need a little tiny tug for maybe six inches to a foot. It's right. not even that big of a deal. So by the time you pull line... And then you get everything hooked up and the safety factors coming into play. It's not worth pulling the line. It's just not. But there are times we had a, a student who was coming up uh, Gold Mountain um, and his lockers were not working. He didn't really need them, but the, his, he was a two-door. So his wheelbase is a little bit shorter. Uh, we had to use our winch kind of at a strange, almost like an L shape is mm-hmm. the way that, that you remember that um, – that obstacle, the hard one on Gold Mountain. Right. And his winch line, he had a brand new winch. The line wasn't even connected. So he pulled all oh his line goodness. out and it wasn't connected. So he couldn't strap himself to a tree and then use that to pull himself up on his own. So we had to come into play, do a snatch block, which is a whole other episode I can go through, and use that kind of coming sideways, if you will, and then down. And so we used a tree and a tree saver. So there are times that you may find yourself using a winch, but for the most part, it's the last sort of option. You go through a whole list of, well, what is the situation? What has happened here? Are they stuck in mud, sand? Is it a rock? Is it whatever? And then the tools that you have on board let you sort of decide what you want to use first. But winch line really is sort of the last resort. So, Wendy, uh, t- talking about our one of our top stories tonight, uh, I can see a time that uh, whenever you go to do winchings, it's very, uh, it's complex, it's dangerous, and you'll need to hold your phone up so the AI can take a like, take an <laughs> idea of the situation that you're in. Yes. And, and then it will instruct you because, uh, you know, unless you get arms and legs, you really can't uh, do the whole winching thing. But uh, before you can, before the winch will unlock. You have to agree to follow the AI instructions. So, yeah. what do you think? I, yeah, I, yeah, I can actually see the AI developing into stand back, and it shoots the line out. It ratches itself around a tree perfectly, protects the tree, pulls oh. itself out. Oh, and yeah. this would be great too. And the other phones are with the AIs are watching, and they're all yelling at you. This like mm-hmm. sp- multiple spotters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and that's something too. If you're the one in control of that winch line, you are in control, and don't be afraid to bark it. And if you're a woman, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Do not let someone. No, I, I mean I've been on some of it, some trails, and we've had to help somebody, and they weren't part of our group, and it's like I'll take over, and the guys are looking at me like, what does she know? And it's like, dude. Do you ever do you ever fire a shot in the air to get uh get all everybody all calmed down and listening to you, <laughs> Annie Oakley type style? Uh, not in California. If I want to be, <laughs> if I want to stay out of jail. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it is um it is a great tool to have on board. It is something to definitely consider. You do need to look at the different kind of models that are out there. Buy a good brand. Don't buy the cheapy brand. Uh, make sure you're looking at the load and the um, ability of the capacity of what it can do. And really 
get out with somebody who understands what they're doing so that you're not trying to do this for the first time by yourself. Because mm. like the student thought they were brand new winch, it wasn't even attached to the spool. So it did them no good. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was the reading instructions type thing uh, that, yes. that needed to happen. So, and I don't want anybody to think that uh, this is is overly complex. No, it, it's it totally is. Not. It is detailed, uh, and but it is something that is, is it actually gets quite easy to do once you've practiced it. So we don't want to overcomplicate it or make you afraid of getting into just having a winch. Yeah. Um, so because uh, it's, I think it's better to have the tool than not and 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 you need to practice with it uh, yeah you do and and if it, it, and sometimes it doesn't have to be you you can just watch what somebody else does and then apply yeah. it to whenever you need to use it yeah it's uh it's good if anybody has any questions if they want to learn a little bit more you know reach out to me on the jeeptalkshow.com slash contact i'm happy to answer that i'm actually certified um to operate a wench and also to help others so i'm happy to do that just let me know and if you want to actually see video of us using a wench in the proper way, you can check out our YouTube channel at Trails411. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. So there you go. Very, very cool. Yeah. Wenching is really, uh, it's a really great tool to have. And uh, uh, I think that it's important to have one. Uh, and, and, you know, actually, uh, you probably, uh, and it, it just depends on how much you, how much you do off road. Uh, it, I think, I think a lot of times it's like a police officer and a, and a, a handgun. Uh, <laughs> some police officers go their entire career with never firing their weapon, uh, on the job other than just training. And I mm -hmm. think you could do that. the same thing with a winch, but it's yeah. a, it's a great tool to have just in case. All right. So, uh, I do not know of any kind of security camera surveillance system for the Gladiator and aftermarket surveillance system. Uh, I had been looking for something like a DVR that you could put in a vehicle and it would support multiple cameras because, you know, if you're trying to provide uh, video surveillance of your vehicle when you're, you're not there or maybe even when you are driving it, uh, you probably need at least four cameras. So that means you need a, uh, a digital uh, video recorder that you can use to record all that stuff because, of course, you don't never know when you're going to need the video. Uh, but it's uh, exceedingly important if the, the vehicle is by itself. Now, I, I don't know if everybody remembers uh, about the, the 2021 Jeep Talk Show Gladiator being attacked while it was sitting alone and defenseless in, a, par in a parking lot. Poor uh, baby. I wanted video security even before that happened uh, because uh, it would be wonderful just to get your own video and show it to the police and get the license plate number and have the up close uh, face of the person that uh, did the damage to your vehicle or perhaps stole your tires and wheels uh, or uh, took your catalytic converter. So uh, I just think it'd be a co cool thing to have. Now, uh, once I saw Tesla coming out with stuff uh, and you see these videos, of, actually there's whole YouTube channels about uh, uh, people doing things to Teslas or uh, accidents or uh, driving erratically around a Tesla. And it's just so cool. They have such a, a great um, video range of angles and uh, different sides. It really tells the tells the story very well. So, really, my question is: Does anybody know of an aftermarket uh, camera security system that you could put on a vehicle? Uh, I, I would I would just love to have someone like that. Now, keep in mind, I don't like paying people to to install stuff my, uh, themselves because it's usually very expensive. Uh, so I don't mind getting a good system, but I'd much rather be able to install it myself. And well, I have a I have a question for sure, you. Sure, sure. There are some vehicles, and I can't think of the. Is it Ford? Somebody has where you, when you're in the vehicle, the camera system they have lets you see the vehicle from gives you like an overview side, yeah, yeah 360. all around yeah. you. Is yeah. wouldn't that be a security system in a sense? Does it record? I guess is the question. I th that's I th that's I th probably where I would start. I think that is a, to allow you to drive around or maybe uh, back into a parking spot or something. You know, like a parallel park type situation. Uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a but camera, it's, so why couldn't it? Yeah, but it? it doesn't give you enough information as far as, uh, the like, if somebody's keying the side of your vehicle, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. initially show that, and I don't well, think it shows their face. I'm not talking about, like, a backup system or, or, or forward system. I see some of these vehicles have a camera for the front for driving, for crying out loud, but I'm talking about where I've seen where there's, it's like it's hovering above your vehicle, 
but you can see all sides of your vehicle in the back and the front and around your vehicle. I'm just wondering if that isn't maybe I don't know what it is. I just remember hearing about that. So well, the image that I have in my mind is a complete overhead of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and, and that wouldn't have enough information to be able to right. identify a person. But it would be great for driving around things to see how far you are away from stuff. You know, it's funny. Some people have a problem with that. I can drive very close to things. I could do that before I started going off road. Uh, it's just having a good feel for where your where the vehicle uh, yeah. uh, stops and the the safety area starts because I can I can drive real close to things. And it yeah, I think it's I think it's kind of sad that we have those features on cars now because when we're working with a student, it's like. Turn all that off. I want you to learn to feel your vehicle. You need to learn how how wide, yeah, how wide, how long, you know, how tall. You, you need to learn all that stuff, and you don't have to damage it to figure these things out. There's simple things you can do to learn that, but it's funny how many people do not understand that. You know, it's like you park in a parking lot to go to the grocery store. Are you in between the lines, or are you hanging off the lines? Like, oh, what's God. happening here? I'm having such you know? a hard time parking in the lines of that truck. I mean, the trucks, oh. trucks are another thing, you know, because they're long – and you pull into a, a, a parking spot, and uh, uh, invariably I have to back up and look and back up and look. And I've kind of started using the backup camera uh, to be able to tell if the lines are long enough. I can kind of tell if I'm in the right place. I don't, wanna, a, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. But you have to longer wheelbase. you got to start a little bit wider, yep. not so close to your line. And then you got to go a little further than you think to be able to make the turn. But for me, because I have that long bed, long bed um, Chevy crew cab. Oh, you know what I'm of, talking about. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do it all the time. So for me, backing in is easier um, and or pulling through is the best. But yeah, you just have to learn the length of your vehicle and where that turning point is. Well, don't forget, that's what the guy did at Sam's Club that damaged my vehicle. He pulled through. Mm -hmm. And and he pulled through, but uh, because the truck is is a, is a lot longer than what you're used to, you may not pull far enough full, uh, far enough forward to get your ass out of the way. <laughs> well, you just like I said, you have to learn spatial awareness. <laughs> oh, Length and I it. guess and I guess if you don't learn, you can just take it out on the other vehicle. <laughs> That's right. That's how it works. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm just kind of curious. This this it, it crossed my mind. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I'm going to be talking about a, a dash cam here in a, a coming episode, and uh, I think that uh, the dash cam is very nice, but it only shows you one angle. And of course, you could buy multiple dash cams, but good lord, who wants to be going through all the pulling all the the memory cards out? And oh my gosh, can you, you know? imagine <laughs> just be? I mean, you might as well stay home in that bubble wrap still. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's great. AI, to have. yeah. You know, it, you know it, what? It, I mean, having all that video is great to have, but it's a, it's a big hassle. Can, can you imagine AI in the future? Don't touch the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please step away from the vehicle. There, yeah. there were some alarm systems that used to talk. I don't know if you remember those. You know the 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 scourge oh, yes. of the alarm systems back yes. uh, twenty years ago, where they would uh, they would chirp at you if you got too close to the vehicle, and and then there was the the high dollar ones that would talk to you. They would say, "Step away from the vehicle." Uh huh. Yeah, annoying. <laughs> <laughs> From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And Chuck, we finally can agree on a few things. We both agree that it's more valuable to have a properly functioning rig as opposed to a pretty one. We both agree that doing your own oil change is probably best and cheaper. But when you said people need to turn off the TV and get outside more. Uh, I'm guessing you've never seen the 1980s TV show, ALF. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with it, I have no idea how to explain it, other no. than it's pure genius. <laughs> well, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling to tell you that two monkeys decided to share an Amazon account. Yeah, they're real primates. Yeah, that, that sounded oh. a lot funnier in my head. Oh my All right, God. boys and girls, I'll chat you later, and have a good one. Bye. And I've got oh. a huge ass. So uh, I, uh, I I don't know if you. That was uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've uh, if you've already heard about this, Wendy, but I uh, I made a mixtape. Uh, of sorts, a digital okay. mixtape okay. for for Chuck. So it was all it was. I guess I would say the best of Nikki G. So okay. it was just wall to wall Nikki G. Oh you put God. it on play, and it goes right through. Chuck made it to the uh, the third annual Jeep Talk Show event in record time. 
So <laughs> his challenge was he couldn't stop it. He could only stop it once he got to got to where he was going. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mean. Actually, that that was pretty funny, Nikki G. I'm going to give you your 18%. He's 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 good now. So, I, I don't know if you guys have been following him on Facebook. Have you seen his travels? Oh to yeah, get to, hilarious. To the event? That's brilliant. oh my gosh, he's that was brilliant. But if you haven't seen it, check out fa- his uh, Nikki G. I don't think it's Nikki G on Facebook. What's his? It's his Nick. Uh, it's uh, Nick. Nick, and I, I can't pronounce the last name. It's uh, Italian or something. So yeah. Anyway, but it is hilarious. So. He's doing a great job, but that'll be fun to have him um, to hear all about you guys' story next time, how you guys all managed yep. to make it on the show, how, I mean, the event, so and how he liked it. We have to hear about that. Yeah, the first time uh, he's ever been to one of our events. Uh, first time out of the house is uh, what I've heard. So, uh, speaking of the uh, third annual Jeep Talk Show event, one of the things that we had at the event uh, was uh, GMRS radios. Mm. And uh, being there, I, uh, I reminded me of this. Uh, the uh, I think a really good GMRS handheld radio, and I would call it a disposable handheld radio, but very but very well made. Uh, twenty six ninety nine, and and that's up a little bit uh, over because yeah. you, know, you know how inflation's been. Right. So it was it was closer to twenty two, twenty three, or twenty four not too long ago. Uh, right. But the Ritivis or Ritivis, uh, R E T E V I S, R B, uh, really big or uh, Romeo Bravo two six GMRS handheld radio twenty six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It is cheap, but it's high quality. Now okay. it doesn't have a display, and I, I think that's one of the reasons why the cost is down low. But what it does is when you change channels by pressing the up or down button. Uh, a voice announces the channel number, kind of like those uh, those alarm car alarm systems we were talking about. <laughs> How nice! <laughs> Step away from the radio. Yeah, um, channel twelve. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's a female voice, so you know you pay attention or not, depending on how you how you are. And, Depending on how married you are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it has 30 channels, which is a standard GMRS yeah. uh, handheld. It is a high-powered radio. I don't have the wattage here. It's probably two or three watts. Uh, it's not 50 watts because it's a handheld, so get real. Uh, and uh, you definitely listen to this part. If you were just kind of glossing over the stuff, but you're, you know, like you're buying this thing, you have to get uh, – well, I recommend getting the Chirp software. It's free. You download it, you, you'll need a cable, so you'll need to add a programming cable cable to the RB26 purchase. Uh, and then hook that thing up to your computer, run Chirp, and then turn off all of the tone squelch. If you don't, people will hear you, but you won't hear them unless they have that tone squelch turned on their transmit. It's, it, of course, it's not called tone squelch at that point. It's their uh, the, the tone that they're sending whenever they're they're transmitting. So it's very frustrating. Now, if you get two of those Redivis RB26 GMRS uh, handhelds, you can talk all day long back and forth because they're both programmed the same way. I have no idea why Redivis does this, where they program it with a tone squelch, because as soon as you start trying to talk to another radio, if that other radio is not set up with the same t- uh, tone, and it's called a privacy tone, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, you're not going to hear them. Uh, and it's very frustrating, because it's like, this thing's brand new, it's not working. Well, it just as soon as I get one, and I've bought about five of them, I think, so far, because uh, I keep handing them out, uh, and uh-huh. they and they go away, and people use them. Oh, you need to put your name on them. No, no, I do it on purpose. Uh, it, it's usually at the events that we have. I'll, I'll just they don't have a radio, and I'll say here, and it's got a Jeep Talk Show uh, a sticker on it, and uh, so it's it's kind of like advertising, and you know, twenty five bucks. It's like uh, wow. Disposable. So hold on a minute here. Are you saying that if you get to go to that next one with a fourth annual Jeep Talk Show event, they'll get a handheld radio? No, I'm not saying oh, that at okay. all. Okay, I was just double checking. <laughs> well, we're not we're not handing out radios. It's just if somebody needs a radio, uh, right. I, I don't have to sweat it about uh, making sure I get it back. It's not like oh, it's I a, a four hundred dollar radio or something. Yeah. and somebody's well, borrowing. We we have handhelds as well. I think I don't know. We bought a pair, um, so we have four of them. But we use them with our students. You know, that way we can communicate. But we do get them back. They have our names on them. Mm-hmm. So. 
And, and there's more than one use. I mean, I can uh, very well see uh, uh, Bill and Wendy going to a Walmart or a store mm-hmm. or something. Exactly. And, uh, and and Wendy doesn't feel like getting out and says, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to stay in the Jeep. And uh, Bill goes to get out and she says, oh, take the handheld with you in case I think of something. And mm-hmm. Bill gets all depressed and his head drops and he doesn't want to be, <laughs> be told what to do while he's in the store. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. Whatever. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Hurry up. I want to go home. Did it's you get my gone. ice cream? <laughs> exactly. You've been gone two minutes. What the hell's taking so long? And he holds it up to it's his Walmart. face. Holds it up to his face and very quietly goes, you're talking too loud. Don't just, yeah. you're, just wait till I get back out there. I've no, got your actually, damn ice cream. <laughs> actually, what would happen is that, that would accidentally get turned off, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or dropped. <laughs> repeatedly wow, this is really good though for somebody new getting into the into it it's nice to pick up two of them for that price oh absolutely. you're always wheeling with somebody who doesn't have a radio and it's nice to have that communication so mm-hmm. and and i very much recommend getting a uh a internally installed externally antenna uh you know like a, a high-powered mobile radio uh, but absolutely have a handheld because uh, it's wonderful. Like for the situation, something like if you're trying to embarrass your spouse in a store, it's perfect for that. <laughs> <laughs> you can just sit there comfortably with the microphone and you know they're going to hear you because you're on a high powered mobile. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and in the big scheme of things, you don't need to hear them. They just need to hear no, you. <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking I have some new things to think about. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Well, thanks for listening to this episode of the Jeep Talk Show. If you enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps us improve the show and reach more Jeep enthusiasts just like yourself. And also don't forget to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Sign up for our email newsletter to stay up to date on the latest Jeep news, events, and giveaways. Finally, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Go to deeptalkshow.com slash contact and you'll find multiple ways to contact. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you on the next episode of the Jeep Talk Show. You know, Easter Jeep Safari is just around the corner. It's only 296 days away. Wow, that's cl- that's it, quick. It's kind of like Christmas, right? You <laughs> yes, have a little exactly. thing you have on the wall, you know, only 364 days to, to Christmas. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Broadcasting since 2010.